Crystal Mitchell, a beautiful young mother from Vancouver, Washington, had gone through a divorce and decided to relocate to Phoenix, Arizona for a fresh start. There, she met RJ, and the two began dating. RJ invited Crystal to spend a weekend with him at his friend's condo in San Diego. While in San Diego, they went to a bar, and after some time there, they returned to the condo. The following morning, Crystal's lifeless body was discovered in her room, and RJ was nowhere to be found. But was RJ responsible for her murder? If so, what could have driven him to do it? Let's unpack this horrifying case. Crystal Mitchell was born on May 21, 1986, in Pasadena, California. A few years later, her family relocated to Vancouver, Washington. It was in this new city that Crystal embarked on her academic journey at Mountain View High School. As the years unfolded, Crystal found love and tied the knot at the age of 22. Her husband, a brave individual who had served in the military, bore the scars of war from his last tour in Iraq. The physical and mental toll of his service became evident, casting a shadow over their marriage. The challenges of raising a family amidst the aftermath of his wounds proved to be a formidable task. In 2012, the strains on their relationship reached a breaking point, and Crystal and her husband decided to get a divorce. In the aftermath of her divorce, Crystal's unwavering devotion shifted to her two young children, who became the focal point of her life. In 2014, Yearning for a fresh start, she made a courageous decision to relocate to Phoenix, Arizona, alongside her two-year-old daughter and three-year-old son. Once she settled in Arizona, Crystal took on the role of a property manager at an apartment complex, showcasing her resilience as she simultaneously pursued her dream of becoming a real estate broker through dedicated study. As the pieces of her life began to fall into place, Crystal, a young and attractive single woman, held on to hope for a second chance at love. It was in this chapter of her life that a new man entered the scene, bringing with him the promise of new beginnings and perhaps the love Crystal had been yearning for. One afternoon in May of 2016, the atmosphere in Crystal's workplace took an unexpected turn. A man named Raymond McLeod, who went by the nickname RJ, strolled into Crystal's office. He was referred to the apartments Crystal worked at by an apartment referral agency. He was looking for a new apartment with two bedrooms, one for himself and another for his son. As he discussed his needs with the leasing agent, he couldn't help but glance at Crystal. Every time he visited the office to speak with the leasing agent, his gaze would inevitably drift towards Crystal. RJ eventually became a tenant in the apartment complex and found reasons to frequently visit the leasing office, creating opportunities to see Crystal. What started as casual encounters gradually evolved into conversations, and soon, RJ and Crystal found themselves getting to know each other on a more personal level. He grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona, and later in life he ended up in the Marines, where he served his country. Along the way, he got married, had a child, and later divorced. After his military service, he joined his parents' insurance company as an agent. In RJ's apartment, a collage of photos of his son adorned the walls. It painted a picture of a man who seemed to excel in the realm of parenting, leaving a lasting impression on Crystal. For her, being a good father was a crucial criterion in her dating choices, a perspective shaped by her own experiences as a single parent. Crystal wasn't fond of the dating scene. She found it exhausting to invest time in dates, only to discover a lack of common interests later on. Moreover, dating was challenging for her, particularly as a mother of two. However, RJ stood out as an exception. His shared commitment to parenthood resonated with Crystal, making him an appealing and relatable partner. Beyond his qualities as a father, Crystal found him physically attractive and was drawn to his charismatic personality. Consequently, they started dating. But Crystal was not eager to jump into a serious relationship just yet. She shared with RJ that she had recently ended a relationship with a controlling ex-boyfriend who was still stalking her. In response, RJ offered her a firearm for her protection. This act of care only deepened Crystal's growing fondness for him. RJ's image as a strong, muscular figure, coupled with his role as a loving father, 
resonated with Crystal. His genuine concern for her safety added an extra layer of appeal. In a world where feeling secure was a rare and cherished commodity, RJ seemed to offer that safety net. It wasn't difficult to understand why Crystal found herself drawn to him. His caring nature, protective instincts, and the feeling of safety he provided became an anchor at a time she most needed it in her life. Crystal harbored a deep love for San Diego, finding solace and joy whenever she could escape to its sandy shores. The beach became a haven for her, and she had shared with her mom the dream of one day moving to San Diego. Aware of Crystal's fondness for San Diego, RJ proposed a weekend trip to the city after they had known each other for just three weeks. He told her that he has a friend in San Diego who is married and has a condo. We'll refer to RJ's friend as Mark and his wife as Michelle. RJ further shared that Mark and Michelle had a child and their condo had spare rooms. This information reassured Crystal, as it suggested she could have her own room and wouldn't be forced to share a room with RJ if she didn't want to, given their relatively new relationship of only three weeks. He informed Crystal that they would leave on a Thursday and return on Sunday. Crystal agreed to this plan and was thrilled about the upcoming trip with RJ. They decided to use Crystal's new car for the journey. So on Thursday, June 9, 2016, they embarked on their approximately five-hour drive to San Diego. The open road stretched before them, holding the promise of a memorable weekend filled with sun, sand, and the allure of newfound companionship. Crystal shared a strong bond with her mother, Josephine Wenzel, and they frequently communicated over the phone. On that particular Thursday, as Crystal and RJ were en route to San Diego, she sent a text to Josephine informing her of their trip. At this point, Josephine had not yet met RJ and had no idea what he even looked like. So, she asked Crystal to send a picture of him. Upon receiving and viewing RJ's photo, a sense of unease crept over her. Unable to pinpoint the source of her discomfort, Josephine couldn't shake the feeling that something about RJ didn't feel right. It was a mother's intuition, an unexplainable sense that this person might not be as trustworthy as he seemed. Upon their arrival at Mark and Michelle's condo in San Diego, Crystal and RJ spent the evening enjoying some cocktails and engaging in light-hearted conversation with them. It was a casual catch-up session, especially for RJ and Mark, who hadn't seen each other for some time. But since Michelle had worked the next morning and they had a young child, Mark and Michelle decided to retire for the night around 10 o'clock. Undeterred by the early hour, RJ and Crystal, eager to extend their evening, ventured out to a local bar for a few more drinks. As they were at the bar, savoring their night out, a disagreement arose between the two. According to a report, the situation escalated and RJ ended up slapping Crystal. A concerned bystander, witnessing this act of aggression, felt compelled to intervene and confronted RJ, resulting in a physical altercation with him. The escalating situation prompted the bar staff to intervene and ultimately led to them all being asked to leave the bar. After being kicked out of the bar, RJ and a visibly shaken Crystal made their way back to Mark and Michelle's condo. The night's earlier promise of enjoyment now overshadowed by the dark undercurrent of violence. The next morning, on June 10, 2016, Mark and Michelle got up at 6.30 a.m. and quietly began their morning routine. They didn't want to disturb RJ and Crystal, who they assumed must have still been sleeping after their night out. Michelle, mindful of work commitments, headed off to her job, and Mark left the apartment briefly, only to return later. However, as the afternoon progressed, Mark's concern grew. By around 1 p.m., he realized that neither Crystal nor RJ had emerged from the bedroom. Alarmed by the unusual silence, Mark decided to check on them, so he knocked on their bedroom door but received no response. He knocked again, louder this time, but still there was silence. With no response, he slowly opened the bedroom door, only to be met with a shocking and heartbreaking sight. Crystal's lifeless body lay on the bed, and RJ was nowhere to be found. The gravity of the situation sank in, and Mark immediately dialed 911. Soon after, law enforcement officers arrived at the condo. They immediately went to the room where Crystal's body was located. Tragically, she was declared dead at the scene. 
There was evidence of physical trauma on her body, and traces of blood on the floor and bed suggested a fierce struggle had taken place. Mark was clueless about RJ's whereabouts, and to add to the mystery, Crystal's car was missing. A breakthrough came when Harbor police officers stumbled upon Crystal's abandoned car in the airport parking lot a day or two later. This discovery marked a crucial lead, but it also deepened the sense of unease surrounding RJ's sudden disappearance. Detectives were quickly able to determine that on the 10th, early in the morning, RJ had rented a car from San Diego International Airport. In a swift turn of events, it became apparent that he had crossed the border into Mexico in the rented vehicle. The unfolding investigation now took on an international dimension as law enforcement sought answers and justice for Crystal's tragic and untimely demise. Crystal was always cautious about the people she allowed into her life. When RJ leased his apartment, two credit checks were conducted, none of which raised any concerns. Regrettably, a criminal background check wasn't mandatory. Had a comprehensive background check been conducted, Crystal would have learned that RJ was hiding a violent history. He had been married three times, and charges of domestic violence had been filed against him by his first wife. Even more alarming, just three months before the tragic events that claimed Crystal's life, RJ was accused of attempting to strangle his third wife. Despite these serious allegations, he had been released on a $50,000 bond for domestic violence, and the case was still pending when he met Crystal. According to reports, while his third wife was asleep, RJ had gone into the room and started strangling her. She woke up, and as she was gagging, she fought back. Fortunately, there were friends in the apartment who came and pulled him off of her. In 2009, he pleaded guilty to aggravated assault against his then-wife and for violating a restraining order. There were also additional charges filed against him for assaulting a minor. RJ managed to strike a plea deal in the case, and in the following year, all charges were dropped. This resolution came after he completed a domestic violence diversion program, raising concerns about the efficacy of the justice system in addressing and preventing repeat offenses. Three days after Crystal was murdered, authorities discovered RJ's rental car abandoned in Mazatlan, Mexico. The international pursuit of justice intensified as San Diego police homicide investigators amassed enough evidence to charge Raymond McLeod with the murder of Crystal Mitchell. A warrant for his arrest was issued, but the wheels of justice seemed to turn slowly, frustrating Crystal's grieving mother, Josephine. When five months had passed with RJ still at large and no significant breakthroughs in the case, Josephine decided to step in and assist law enforcement with the case. Josephine just happened to be a retired police detective, and although she wasn't able to physically assist with the case, she used the internet and social media to spread awareness and help generate leads for law enforcement. But investigators knew that tracking down RJ was not going to be an easy task. He had escaped to Mexico, and the authorities suspected that he might have moved further into Central America. This international aspect significantly complicated the search efforts. Despite these challenges, the investigators remained committed to their mission of finding RJ and bringing him to justice. There were reported sightings of him in several locations. Authorities had leads placing him in Guatemala in March 2017, and there were also reports of him being seen in Belize and Mexico. Unfortunately, these leads did not culminate in his capture. Two years had passed since the tragic loss of Crystal, and RJ was still at large, but the resolve to find him remained unbroken. Crystal's mother, along with the investigators, refused to give up. Fueled by an unwavering commitment to justice, they decided to amplify their efforts. In a bid to garner public support and generate new leads, a press conference was convened. Through the media, they sought to heighten awareness, appealing to the public for any information that could aid in locating RJ and bringing an end to the agonizing quest for justice. I'm just appealing to the public. I mean, we have America's best behind me. We have one of the greatest team there is. But sometimes best is not good enough. Sometimes we just need more. And But now I'm appealing to the people, to the public, please. If you know where he's at, if you know anything about him, if you know someone that knows him, if you have family in Central America, alert the world. Get this man off the streets so he doesn't strike again.
After the press conference, the U.S. Marshals received numerous tips from individuals claiming they had seen RJ in various parts of Mexico or Central America. However, despite these leads, he continually managed to stay one step ahead of law enforcement. Some sources revealed that RJ presented himself as a Marine, stating that he was simply backpacking and exploring different towns. According to these accounts, when the situation became heated or the authorities closed in, he would quickly move to another location. This pattern of evading capture made the task of tracking him down exceptionally challenging for investigators. This continued for several years. As the search for RJ continued without resolution, the urgency to apprehend him reached a critical point. By April 2021, the U.S. Marshals elevated the stakes by adding him to their 15 most wanted fugitives list. After years of elusive maneuvering and various reported sightings, a significant breakthrough finally arrived. A local woman in Sonsonet, El Salvador, recognized RJ from a local news website where she had read about the case and she immediately contacted authorities. Around 10 days after receiving this invaluable tip, U.S. Marshals finally succeeded in apprehending RJ. It was revealed that he had been living under the alias Jack Donovan while working as an English teacher at a local school, earning $1,000 per month. At the time of his arrest, RJ was found wearing a shirt that bore the words coach and changing lives on the back, a stark irony given the gravity of the charges against him and the lives he had irreversibly affected. On Saturday, August 20th, the United States Marshal Service received a tip through the U.S. Marshal's website indicating someone resembling McLeod's characteristics may be working as an English instructor at a school in San Senado, El Salvador. On Monday, August 29th, U.S. Marshals accompanied a team of El Salvadorian police to the town of San Senado and conducted surveillance on the school in question. They determined the individual inside the school was, in fact, Mr. McLeod, going by the name of Jack Donovan. El Salvadorian law enforcement officials took McLeod into custody inside the classroom from where he was teaching. McLeod was deported out of the country and returned to the United States the following evening by El Salvadorian authorities. U.S. Marshals from the San Diego office then took custody of McLeod upon arrival at Los Angeles International Airport Tuesday evening. He was then transported to San Diego Police Headquarters and turned over. San Diego District Attorney Summer Steffen said Crystal's mother, Josephine Wenzel, was instrumental in bringing RJ to justice. The X factor in this case was Josephine Wenzel, Crystal's mother. She was the X factor. She was never going to give up. And she was doggedly determined to bring the man who killed her daughter to justice. Josephine is simply a force of nature. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again, he messed with the wrong mother. Raymond R.J. McLeod has pleaded not guilty to murder. He remains jailed without bail. A date for the trial has not yet been set. In memory of Crystal Mitchell, we celebrate a compassionate soul who cherished her children, enveloping them in endless love and care. Her devotion to motherhood shone through in the well-behaved and nurtured spirits of her beloved children. Crystal's closeness to her mother was a testament to the depth of her relationships, as she consistently went the extra mile to make special occasions truly extraordinary. Whether it was birthdays or any other momentous event, Crystal's thoughtful planning weeks in advance reflected her unwavering love and dedication to those she held dear. Her vibrant spirit, infectious laughter, and magnetic presence made her the life of every gathering. Crystal had a unique ability to captivate a room, her vivacious energy leaving a lasting impression on everyone she encountered. A sweet and kind-hearted young woman, her love for God illuminated her life, providing a foundation of faith compassion, and love for others. We extend our deepest condolences to all Crystal's loved ones, especially her mother Josephine, her father, and her two children. May God's peace and joy fill your hearts and minds, and may Crystal's soul rest in eternal peace.